You know the drill. I'm Chef Ben. This is Dinner with Ben, brought to you by Ashworks Cutting Boards and T North Carbonated Iced Tea. This is episode 17, and tonight we are making ravioli and pepperonata with my very special guests, Steve and Donna from Ashworks Cutting Boards. Hi, guys. Hello. We're super excited to be here tonight. Hello, Miss Juanita. Hello, hello, everybody. So, these lovely people make these beautiful boards. And these beautiful boards behind us. They're going to be here all night. Donna decided she doesn't really want to be on camera, so she's going to hide over there. And Steve and I are going to make some ravioli. So if you guys have any questions about Ashworks, tonight is the night to ask them. I mean, they're usually on answering anyway. But if you have any questions about the boards or about the company, jump in and we'll answer them as best we can. So, you know what we're making? We're doing ravioli. We're doing ravioli. So, we're going to make a sausage ravioli. Oh, so we have it. this beautiful Italian sausage here. And we need to cook it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take the meat out of the casing. And then we'll fry it up. And we will put this aside and then mix it with ricotta after it cools down. Okay? So I'm going to get you to do that. All right. I'm just going to wash my hands yes, here real quick. Yes, of course. Go for it. Hello everybody, hello, hello, hello. Hello Sue, how are you? Hello Crystal. Who else? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Right. What do you want me to use for a knife to... Just this. So piece. all we're going to do is just right down the center. Perfect. You can put it on the board if you want. And then we'll just pull the meat right out. Okay. Do we need to break it up or anything? No, we'll do that no. in the pan. Okay. All right. See, this is the problem. My comic books is over here. Always over here. The type of sausage? Are these Italian sausages? These are Italian sausages, Ooh. yeah. So these are... Uh, Do they ever smell good? Let me tell you. These are local. They're caviches, which is made in... Uh, up around, I can't remember where they're made. I don't know. I don't know where caviches is, but they make good sausages. Okay. So, we'll see if you're doing that. I have the oven on at 400 because we're going to roast up some peppers. And I'm going to just turn this pan on to medium. Uh, and you guys should, should pay extra attention tonight to what we're doing. We'll tell you why in a little bit, but make sure you're watching what we're doing. It's very important. Hello, Ruby. How are you? Nice to see you. There we go. Fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't mind doing this at all. <laughs> they smell great. They do smell delicious. I can't wait to smell these cooking. Hi Judy, hello. I know Chef Ben wants to do this. It's killing him to watch me do it. Only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job though. There. There you go. I'm gonna give you that. Okay. And you can just put it in that compost there. Okay. And I'm just going to put the sausage, so we just took the casings off these, and then you can just break the meat up. And I just have a little bit of olive oil in this pan, which isn't hot yet. So we'll wait a second. And Steve, well, we're waiting for this pan to heat up. I'm going to get you to cut some peppers. Okay. Now, I've been working on my knife skills. Well, I'm going to so judge this, pretty this, hard, this pretty is going to be excellent. So, what I'm going to get you to do... Mm -hmm. so these have all been rinsed off? Yeah, they've been washed out. Okay. So what we're going to do is take the top off mm -hmm. and the bottom off. We're going to cut down. Okay. And then just kind of unwrap. Excellent. And then we'll get rid of that. We'll pop this out. And then we'll keep this. Okay. okay. And they're all going to be done the same way? Yep. Okay. That's pretty good, pretty good. So start um, what you want to get. Oh, I missed that. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay. So just let me see for So just start right where the where you've already cut. Yep. And then just unwind the pepper as you go. Perfect. Uh, 
Hello, Cavell. Hello, Mike Hall. Hello, Krista. Krista says hello to Donna and Steve. Hey, guys. Super excited to be here. So, if you're just tuning in, all we've done is taken the skin off a pack of Italian sausage. We're just browning it. Steve's cutting up some peppers. We're going to roast them in the oven, which is preheated to 400. Um, and then we're going to make some pasta dough. So, Steve, you're cutting these peppers on a beautiful Ashworks cutting board. Tell me about the boards. How did you guys first start making them? Well, it's been about six years since we started making uh, cutting boards. Not old. Okay, Donna says it's been longer. So we've been at the market for seven years. All right, so we've been doing them longer than six years. Probably <laughs> seven years, maybe eight years. Eight. Eight years. I don't know. I don't have any <laughs> concept of time. Anyway, um, I was doing cabinet work and furniture and things, and, and uh, Donna would come out and watch me in the shop periodically and couldn't stand the fact that there was pieces of wood that I was throwing away. <laughs> so she started taking those pieces of wood and making them into very rudimentary cutting boards, and we were giving them to our clients uh, as gifts. Thank you, gifts. And, uh, of course, Donna being Donna, she wasn't satisfied with uh, the basic stuff, so she looked up how to make hand grain cutting boards, and we started selling them at the farmer's market. And in the city and uh, uh, they became popular and so we we uh, now have a store now we have a store and all kinds of stuff going on we're at shows and oh it's just crazy where's our store located Steve? and our store is located at the seaport farmers market Halifax seaport in, farmers. in Halifax okay. so. um, Sue says that she loves her Ashworks cutting board she is one she was in, uh, do you remember when Write Some Good was here? Yes. So she was in the home cook competition and won, yes. and won a beautiful board. Mm. But Sue, I'm going to call you out on this. She doesn't like to use it. She thinks it's too pretty to use. <laughs> so it just kind of sits in her kitchen. And I kind of scolded her about that when I was at her place for a cooking class. We hear that a lot. Yeah. They're, they're meant to be used though, right? They're meant to be used yeah. every single day. Yeah. If you're afraid of scratching your boards, with the knife, Donna, you're gonna come on camera if you're gonna. If you're afraid of ruining your boards with knife marks, you don't have to worry about end grain. End grain won't show knife marks for years. It's your long grain boards that'll show knife marks. Sand that off, make it look pretty, give it lots of oil, bring out the wood grain, give it some nice beeswax polish, and use it for serving on. You won't see knife marks on your long grain board, and you'll be using your end grain board every day and still won't see knife marks. So, win win. Yeah, when you have pieces like this, they're part of the beauty of them is that they're meant to use. They, they just and they they almost get better with age in some ways. Those showing are off, Steve? All right, what? Are you showing off? Yeah. <laughs> so, Steve, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut these in half, okay. just so it's a little more manageable. Okay. And we're just gonna put them all in the pan. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sorry for calling you out, Sue. Uh, and apparently Caviche's meat is on St. Margaret's Bay Road. Thank you, Crystal. Does it matter which way these go? Uh, no, because we're going to drizzle them with all of them. Oh, okay. And we're going to take the tops and the bottoms as well. Oh, okay. Should I cut them up? Or no, these are fine. Oh, okay. We don't want to waste any of them. Alright. So you guys started just kind of doing it as a way to use up ends. Odds and ends. That's yep. right. And you were giving them away. So how long between when you first started making them to until you went to the market? About a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. So you guys had pretty much got it down by then. Yes, but we still to this day continue trying to improve our processes and trying to make things more beautiful, more sturdy, more uh, different. For we don't rest on our knowledge. We keep trying to educate ourselves. And to that end, you guys are starting to use maple. Yes. Instead of just ash, right? Yes. And the maple is beautiful. It really is. So, all we're going to do with these, so these are just yellow, orange, and red peppers. And we're just going to drizzle with a generous amount of olive oil. And 
and season with salt and pepper. Actually, just gonna cut. Um, just take the top and the bottom off. We're not gonna dice this. Oh, okay. Well, we're we're gonna kind of dice it, but in bigger pieces. Okay. So we'll peel it. And all we're gonna do is cut it twice. Turn it, and then cut it uh, three times. Or two more times. Okay. And then we'll just toss out. Okay. Excellent. So. Our meat's almost done. The reason why we're pre-cooking it is because the ravioli is not going to cook for that long. It's not going to cook long enough to cook the meat from raw. So we're pre-cooking the meat. We're going to let it cool. We'll break it up, mix it with some cheese um, and some flavorings. Uh, and then we'll stuff it in the ravioli and we'll cook that. It's going to be really, really delicious. So the meat is pretty much brown. We're going to take that off the heat. Perfect. So we'll just give this a little toss for the onions in there. And then we're just going to pop this right in there. And again, the oven's at 400 degrees. So how long of those will, will those be in the oven now? Uh, they're going to be in there for probably 35 to 40 minutes. Okay. We want we want the skin to blister a little bit. Okay. Uh, we want to really get the roasted oh. flavor. Because the darker... The, the more roasted we get them, the sweeter they're going to be, and the more that flavor is going to come out. My shoe is great. So with the ravioli and the pepper nata, we're going to make a tomato sauce. It's a very simple tomato sauce, but before we do that, we're going to do the hard part. So we're going to make some ravioli dough, or some pasta dough. So we're going to move this out of the way for now. Here. Now, pasta dough. So, have you ever made pasta dough before? I have not. No. This is the most exciting part for me. <laughs> awesome. This is, it's actually, it's a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy doing it. So, generally with pasta dough, the ratio I use is uh, one egg for every 100 grams of flour. Now, if you don't have a scale, um, I'd say it's like... Probably uh, two eggs for every two and a half to three cups of flour. Okay. Air on the side of less flour if you need to, because you can always need some more in. So what we have here is uh, 400 grams of flour. Okay. Okay. So all we're gonna do is dump this right up. And this is a special kind of flour. This is called double O flour. So you can see it here. So this is an Italian flour. The double O means that it's a very very fine. Flour, it's very, very fine. Like it is. That's the finest flour I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it's, it's insane. But it makes really good pasta. makes really, really good pizza dough. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to use that. And to this, we're just going to add a nice big pinch of salt. And we're just going to mix that up. And now, the tricky bit. So we're going to make a nice big well in the center. Just like that. And now, I'm going to get you to bring four eggs into there. Okay. There's five there, only big four. Okay. Let's see if I can make a mess. That's that's the whole point of this. We're hoping to. Um, people are asking where you get the flour. Uh, this I picked up at Superstore, I believe. Uh, just in the regular flour aisle. So I noticed that these eggs are at room temperature. Yep. There you go. Is there a question there? No, it's just that they were at room temperature. Uh, just because I took them out of the fridge. They don't need oh, to be. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not going to hurt them, though. That's what I was kind of wondering. So eggs um, generally can be held at room temperature. Mm -hmm. In Canada and, and, and North America in general, we don't because they're washed. So we wash the safe membrane off them. 
Uh, but as long as the eggs aren't washed, they're fine. But these have only been out for about 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to drizzle a little tiny bit of olive oil, probably about half a teaspoon. Now, I'm going to take a fork. And all you're going to do is whisk the eggs. Okay. And once the eggs are whisked together with the oil, you're going to slowly start to whisk in flour from the edge. Okay. Okay. How come you don't use a whisk? Because if you use a whisk, you're Clumpy. They'll get clumpy, okay. and you need too much room to whisk the eggs. Gotcha. Probably for the fork, you can just kind of. Yeah, the barbed is from Superstore. It actually it says President's Choice right on it. Guys, this is. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is not gonna be super exciting to watch, but it's a lot of fun to do. Mm -hmm. And just. Just so you know, the passano, after we make it, it has to sit for about an hour in the fridge before we can use it. So I made some earlier. So we're going to make this batch, we're going to make it all the way through, but then the one we're going to use is going to be the one I made earlier. You're doing great, sweetie. No, 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 it looks pretty clumpy. It's, that's okay, it's supposed to. You're just like an old Italian grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys were at the guy show this weekend? Yes. And then you said you're doing shows kind of right up until Christmas? We are. So what else, where where can people see you? Our next show this coming weekend is at the Craft Nova Scotia. So that's at the Kennard Center. Okay, yeah. The weekend following, we're at the Dalplex Christmas Craft Market. Uh, so that's at the Dalplex... You, do, you still do the farmer's market as well, huh? Oh, yes. We will, we will not stop being at the farmer's market during this entire time. Then we have a one-week break, after which we go to the exhibition grounds in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Oh, wow. We'll be there for a Christmas, uh, I forget what you're calling it, but it's a, it's a Christmas craft market there. Nice. Plus, we're doing three pop-up holiday markets in Wolfville at the farmer's market, the, the first three Wednesdays before Christmas. So it's Very a three, cool. a four-hour three-hour window. It's supper and then shopping. So what we can do is once it gets a little too difficult with the fork, we'll get rid of the fork and just use our hands. So cool. And I know like it seems like this is a lot of a lot of effort, and it is, but I mean when you're making pasta from scratch, you want to put the effort in so you get the best quality. Um, there is a way to do this really, really quickly. Using a food processor, you just put all the ingredients in the food processor, blitz it, take it out, ball it up, and you're done. But this is this is much more satisfying <laughs> for me because I'm watching. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think we'll get rid of the fork there, and we'll just go, and then just start kneading it in. Okay. Sounds good. So once the flour is all incorporated into the dough. We need to knead it for about 10 minutes to get proper gluten development. Otherwise, the pasta is not going to have any chew to it. And for ravioli especially, you really want that texture so that the, the pasta holds together. So, think of it like a nice forearm workout. It is, definitely. So actually, while you're doing this, Donna, I think it might be a good time to talk about what's over there. Sure. I do have a scraper. So what is what is this? This is going to be some lucky person's new cutting board. Somebody from your cooking uh, show. One of one of the people out there right now. Yeah. Oh my God. But you have to work for it. So this is a cutting board made out of maple, made by my husband and I and our two youngest boys. And it's an end grain board, so it's kind to your knives. And uh, this is going to be given away on next week's show. Ben is going to draw a name, but you have to watch the show, make the meal, take a picture of your meal, post it on Ben's Facebook page, and then he will do a draw. He'll, he'll do up a ballot for everybody that has done this. And uh, some lucky person next Monday night's name will be drawn and we will deliver. 
Uh, or send it. If you're from away, we will also send it in the mail. Do they have to live in Canada? No. No, we'll ship to the States. We'll yes. ship anywhere. There you go. We'll ship to the States. Yeah. Now, if my sister-in-law, Kayo, is watching this in Japan, that might be a little <laughs> too much uh, postage, but you could get it the next time you're in Canada. It's actually feeling pretty yeah, good. Best of luck, yeah. folks. <laughs> so, and this is maple. And if you, I don't know if you can actually see. Yeah, you can. It's gorgeous. Uh, it just froze up. Yeah, it's a beautiful board. And what, what does this retail for? $150. There you go. It has rubber feet on the bottom. It allows the board to have air under it while you're using it. And it comes with oil and care instructions and it everything. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So again, if you want to enter, all you have to do is make this meal and post a picture of it on my Facebook and tag Ashworks in it as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll draw your name next week. Awesome. Awesome. And Steve is doing a really good job on this pasta. I don't need to work all that into it. It's pretty dry. So what you'll notice, so it feels dry on the outside. But when you open it up, That's it's pretty, super okay. wet. So what you want to do here is kind of push oh, okay. and tear it, and then just kind that of makes it. sense. Yeah, because if you're just constantly kneading the outside, you're not right. getting any in. So okay. you can even just kind of break it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Excellent. Did we lose the feed on your phone, Donna? Yes. Uh oh. Does that mean we lost? Okay, the feed? it's back. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're there. I think we lost you guys for a second, but we seem to be back. Bear with us. Yeah, Kat it says is. it's a beautiful board. It is a beautiful board. We can hear our peppers sizzling. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, so this is nice. So when you make the dough, you don't want it to be soft. Like it should be hard to knead. Um, not like, it shouldn't be like incredibly difficult, but it should it should work your arms. If it's too soft, um, when you try to make the pasta, it's just gonna fall apart. So you really wanna, wanna watch the consistency. Uh, when you knead it, you're going to knead it for about 10 minutes, and what you're going to do is take the ball of dough after the 10 minutes and poke it. And if it springs back right away, then you know it's it's done. And then you can wrap it up, put it in the fridge for at least an hour, and then take it out and roll it. Now, if you don't have a pasta roller like we do here and we're going to use, make the dough a day ahead. Um, if you try, and like this dough that I made earlier today, if we tried to roll this out entirely by hand, it's just going to keep springing back because the glutens haven't had enough time to rest. So if you're going to make, uh, if you're going to roll the dough by hand, let it rest in the fridge overnight. Take it out and let it come to room temperature, and then work with it, and it will be a lot easier for you. Easy. That's really nice. It's almost there too. Perfect. I'm glad you're the one doing this. <laughs> it's. It really is a workout. Like it's it's a lot harder to knead than bread. Hello, Gwen. Hello, hello, hello. And if any, again, if anybody has any questions about Ashworks, feel free to chime in. Or obviously, about the food we're making. Beautiful. So I'm gonna say. That is, yeah, so you see that spring back there? Right. So I'm going to come up here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So you see that spring back? That's what you want. That's how you know it's done. So now all we're going to do is wrap it. Somebody's asking if it can be kneaded in a stand mixer. It's going to probably break your mixer. Um, it's pretty dense. Um, oh, that was close. Um, like I said, what you can do is you can take all the ingredients, so 400 grams of flour, or approximately three and a half cups, um, four eggs, a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and you put it in a food processor, 
and blitz it. You just blitz it for like a minute or two, take it out, dump it on your counter, and ball it up, and you're done. It's much easier than doing it this way, um, and you'll get kind of the same result. But I, I wouldn't recommend doing it in your stand mixer because the gears on them are made out of plastic now, and they tend to break pretty easily, and you don't want to break your mixer. Yeah. Cat's asking how to clean the board. Oh, that's a good question. You guys want to? Sure. Cat, uh, we clean the board just like you clean your kitchen counter with hot soapy water. You just don't wash it in the sink or in the dishwasher because that hot, steamy water for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, however long, will make the wood uh, swell and you just don't want that. It'll ruin your board. But a hot soapy water, just like Ben is doing, I actually will rinse the cloth as well and rinse the board. Um, and, but the most important thing is to oil it well. At first, when you have a brand new board, you oil it once a week. And then as the board becomes more saturated, say over a run of six or eight weeks, then you slow that oiling down to once every two weeks, once a month, once every two months. And what that does is it fills the fibers with the oil so it's not drinking up the juices of the things you're cutting on and it's not drinking up the wash water that you're washing it with. There you go. Good question. Okay. We gotta make some tomato sauce. Okay. Okay. So now you're, you're gonna do that. So now we're gonna get to dice the onion. So do you know what to do? Nope. Cut. cut this end. Yep. <laughs> cut the top off. Yep. And then go like this. Okay. Yep. We want to get that out of the way. I'm the one that's been doing all of this, not Steve, so he needs the instructions. Do I need to take the skin off? Not yet. Okay. So, now so flat. Yep. Like this? Always find the flattest edge. Yep. Okay. And straight down through the middle. I did say the middle, but it's okay. You're a little, a little off uh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because I was standing off to the side. <laughs> so actually, if you... Uh, one thing you'll notice... Um, Oftentimes when people are cutting, especially with bread, they'll lean over and they'll try and see because they want to go straight. Right. When you lean over, you're actually going to turn your knife. Right. So if you want to cut straight, stand up straight, shoulders back, and don't lean over your knife. Okay. Okay. So now we're just going to peel these. Okay. Just like that. And I think I'm going to give these peppers a little toss real quick. We just rearranged our kitchen, so I'm just having trouble finding everything. <laughs> so, do you know what to do now? No, I forget everything. Kay. My mind's gone blank. <laughs> so, I'll do this one, and then you can do that one. I'm working in the sh kitchen here with Chef Ben Ramsey. I haven't yelled, I haven't yelled <laughs> once. <laughs> Not once. So, fingers flat. You can hold them down in a nice right, space, right? right? Fingers flat. I'm not putting pressure on the onion. Just holding it in place. Don't pull all the way through. Nope, and just two. And then with the tip of the knife, and I'm not cutting all the way through the root, but I am cutting all the way down. And then turn it so the root's to your left. And then, no, oh, shouldn't have done that. That's that simple. Well, yes. give it a try. He makes it look so Please easy. don't, please don't try and go that fast. So, if you look at your knife, it's... I need to be over here. But you need to keep it flat. Flat yep. the board. Alright, so I don't go all the way through. Nope. Nope. Nope, I'm not keeping it flat. That's okay, it's okay. I mean, it's only going to ruin the tomato sauce. It's not... I know. That's <laughs> what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, these smell really good. Oh, so, look at that. Yeah. So they're not done, but they're getting there. They're not quite blistered yet. So what we're going to do once these are done is we're actually going to slice them up, and then we're going to drop them in balsamic vinegar and let them kind of marinate a little bit. Come back in. I've been practicing for weeks how to slice properly, and I'm just, I'm, I'm choking. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. 
Try to keep my fingers back out of the way so I don't cut the tips That's off. That's the important part. So yeah. now we'll just flatten the onion. Okay. And then what you can do is just go with the tip of the knife and mm -hmm. mark it again, and then you can get the. So, just like we did. Let me see. Like this. Way. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And this way we waste like as little as possible. And whatever's left over can go in for a vegetable stock. <laughs> so Sue said it's... What did you say exactly? Uh, Sue, uh, when we did our class, she was having problems with this as well. So she's saying it's not just her, it's the onions. So this looks great, but what is this? That's, what, that's are, what are these guys? <laughs> Krista, That's terrible. Krista says you're doing great, Steve. <laughs> oh, thanks, Krista. And we'll just cut that off. Uh, there we go. Mike just joined us. Mike, I don't know if you've heard, but we're doing a giveaway of this beautiful end grain maple cutting board. And I'm pretty sure you're in Detroit, and we will ship it to the States. So I know that there's been a couple other giveaways that you couldn't enter, but you can enter this one. Just a heads up. See how outstanding it was, the dicing that I did? It yeah, turned out perfect. It's terrific. It's terrific. No, you did a you did a really good job. <laughs> so I just have a, a little pot here. I'm just going to heat it up over a medium heat. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually very lightly caramelize these onions to pull the sweetness out. Because these tomatoes, San Marzano's, which are imported from Italy, they're kind of acidic. So we don't really want to add a bunch of sugar. We'll probably add a little bit. We don't add a bunch. So if we caramelize the onions and bring the natural sugars out of them, it's going to sweeten the sauce naturally, as opposed to adding just piles of sugar. Okay? Mm. So we're going to open this guy. Great tip. What I'll add about these particular tomatoes, they're also great for breakfast. If you stew these and have them with your <laughs> eggs in the morning, honestly, they are delicious. I could eat this whole can for breakfast. It says the Navy guy who has fed canned tomatoes for breakfast. So what we're going to do now is one of my favorite things to do in the kitchen. Excuse me for a second. Hi, Karen. Did you remove the top? Sure. So we're just going to dump those right in here. Hi, Sandy. Uh, I get them at Costco, actually. Um, yeah, they come in like a six pack. So these are whole tomatoes, um, but we need to crush them. But we don't really want a fully pureed sauce. So what we're going to do, again, this is one of my favorite things to do in the kitchen. We're going to take our hands and we're just going to crush them. Now, when you do this, grab a tomato and make sure it's under the surface. Because if you squeeze it above the surface, it's going to shoot tomato juice everywhere. <laughs> Good tip. So, we're just breaking them up. Do you want to get in here? It's a lot of fun. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. See, it is kind of fun, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it has a completely different feel from wood. <laughs> So our pan's hot, I'll just put some olive oil in here, about two tablespoons. <laughs> now the onions are going in. And this sauce is very, very simple, but it's very delicious. Uh, and takes no time at all to put together. Mike Wenzel is asking when the giveaway is. Uh, so it's next week. So if you want to um, be a contestant in it, you have to remake this meal. Post a picture of it on my Facebook and tag Ashworks in it before next Monday. And then I'm going to choose a winner next Monday. I'll draw a random name. We'll show the board again closer to the end of the show in yes. case you missed it the first time. Perfect. 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 So now we just want to get a little bit of color on the onions, which is going to take a few minutes. So we're going to start making... Some ravioli. Actually, we'll make our filling first. And I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab another bowl. 
Do you talk for a minute? <laughs> I can tell you that everything smells absolutely fabulous. I'm the uh, assistant galloping gourmet with Graham Kerr here this evening. <laughs> okay, so sausage, I'm just going to put in the bowl. Oh, it smells so good. We're just going to break it up into smaller pieces. Should I do that? Yeah, go for it. All right. And my shoe keeps coming from time. It smells so good. <laughs> so how spicy is this Italian sausage? Has it got a, a bit of bite to it? No, it's not spicy. Do you guys like spicy? Because um, we can put a little chili... I can, I, can eat, I can eat spicy. I don't like know. heat. Too yeah. much heat. I don't want my milk to burn. Oh, try it. My hands aren't clean. There's not really spicy. Spoon or something. How, how, um, how small do you want this done? Yeah. Mm. This size? Yeah. Okay. A little bit smaller than that. Okay. Mm. I could use a little more spice than that for sure. Um, but that's delicious the way it is. Yeah. Ruben just asked if the recipe is going to be on YouTube. So the video will be on YouTube, uh, and you can, you'll be able to find it on Facebook as well. But tomorrow I will actually write a recipe for all this, and I'll put it up on my Facebook so you guys can actually have the recipe to recreate this. Okay? Yeah. I have who to just, tell you, though. Who just sent us an upset face? Who was that? I hope that was an accident. <laughs> I know if I was home, it would have been me, but... <laughs> Sometimes I uh, just keep pressing the thumbs up just to drive Chef Ben crazy. My my sister said my niece, who's uh, three, just sits at home and goes <laughs> on the like button. Which is funny, but I thought I was getting all these likes. Turns out it's just my three-year-old niece. No, it, either that or it was me. <laughs> so that's good there. That's, yeah. that's perfect. So we're going to mix in some ricotta cheese. Does that get mixed in my hand as well? No. Oh, that okay. we're going to mix in with a spoon. Okay, in that case, I'll wash my hands. Uh, you got it. So this next part, after we get this filling made, is like a really fun part. You can actually make the round roll. So we're just probably going to take half of this. And this is just regular ricotta cheese, nothing special about it. So if you want to mix that Hold up. It in or? Yep. There's a, a guy at the Seaport Market, an Italian guy who makes ricotta cheese. Yeah, I've used this cheese yeah. before. Yeah. Zero. Roma cheese, yeah. Zero, yeah. What did you think of it? Did you like it? Beautiful, yeah. yeah. I do work with a winery in Windsor called Bembridge. I broke their menu for them, and uh, the cheese on the pizza is all his cheese. Mm. So you can see a oh, little, yeah. little bit of color coming yeah. out of these onions. Mm -hmm. Some of you can see that, but in another minute or two, there's going to be quite a bit more color, and then we'll add the tomatoes in here. So what we need is just for this to kind of bind together, and it is binding, so okay. that's good. So we're going to put another cheese in here. Perfectly mixed? Yes, that just is perfectly mixed. <laughs> So I'm going to get you to grate all that parm in there. Okay. Uh, he does, Sir does burrata as well, which yeah. is really, really nice. We like his scamorza. The scamorza yeah. is my favorite. Yeah. And yeah, he makes really nice cheeses. Hi, Cassie. I was just talking about you. Cassie, Cassandra is my sister. Okay. Ah. She's the one whose daughter just clicks the like button. Okay. <laughs> So we have half a tub of ricotta in here. We have a whole pack of Italian sausage. Uh, we have about uh, three tablespoons of grated Parmesan. I'm going to season it with salt and pepper and just a pinch of chili flakes. I'd like to add at this point that uh, the dough wasn't near as difficult to do as I thought it would be. I was really intimidated with that. It isn't difficult. It just takes time. Yeah. But again, you can just do it in a food processor if you are so inclined. I don't think so. I'd have to do it by hand. Me too. Food processor, food processor isn't near as messy. Yeah. 
So the onions are nice. They have a nice caramel color to them. They smell sweet. So I'm going to add the tomatoes in. So does this get mixed up as well? Yeah. Okay. Now a pinch of uh, salt and a pinch of pepper. I think I mixed that by hand when I was supposed to use the spoon. <laughs> That's okay. So let's just check it. So once the cheese is mixed in, this is should be what it looks like. Actually, I think we're going to add a bit more. A little more? Yeah, it's a little bit dry. Okay, it's not quite what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> a couple of tablespoons. Yeah. And we're going to put a pinch of oregano in there. It's not in the ingredients list, but I don't care. Can't go wrong with oregano. Nope. Right, I'm just going to grab a spoon here. A couple of tablespoons? Yeah. And just a pinch of chilies. Go. All right. I miss what kind of chili these are. They're just regular chili flakes. Chili flakes, okay. So, uh, this pasta roller, um, you don't spend a lot of money. This one I got at, I think, Stokes for like $20, $30. I mean, you can spend hundreds of dollars on them, but you really don't need to. It'll work just fine. And again, you can roll it by hand, just make sure you make the dough a day ahead. Okay, so let's do that and check. Yeah, that's much better. So we'll set this aside. Let me set this stuff aside. I do think that I might need a bit more salt. Is that it? Yeah. Should I use the spoon again or will we mix it in my hand? Okay. So, now the really fun part. Now we get to make some, some ravioli. This is the exciting part. It's, it's all really been exciting is. so far. Mm. I'm excited because Steve's learning how to make this now. He can make it for me. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> That's always the trap. Right. <laughs> it is the trap. Okay. So. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Perfect. So we'll just set that aside for now. Okay. Are we done with this one? Um, actually, you might as well keep it. Okay. So I'll do the first one, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to let you do okay. the other ones. So, I have this dough here. What I'm going to do is cut this in thirds. Now, I made this probably three hours ago. Uh, let it sit in the fridge and then just pulled it out about uh, an hour ago. So, cut it in thirds. So, is it better to work with this at room temperature again? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you definitely want to let it come to room temperature. So, we're going to take a bit of flour. Just our regular double O. And you can do this with all-purpose flour. I just saw the double O there and was like, okay. I don't get to use regular flour very often anymore, so I thought I'd use the best I could. And yeah, if you're wondering, this is not gluten-free. I'm not actually eating this. Uh, that's how much I like Donna and Steve. <laughs> so we're just going to flour it. Just kind of press it down. And we're going to take a rolling pin. And you can see as I roll it, how it stretches back. Right. So that's what I'm saying about leaving it in the fridge overnight if you're going to roll it by hand, because it's just going to keep stretching back on you. Is that the gluten that's doing that? That's exactly right. Okay. So what we want to do is roll this thin enough that it's going to go through the thickest setting on our pasta roll. And 
and try not to push the laptop off the counter like I almost just did. Okay, so the pasta roller, if you come look, it has, this one has seven numbers, some of them have nine. Seven is the widest gauge, and then it goes all the way down to one, which is like paper thin. For this, we're probably un only going to go to two, maybe three, depending. So we're not going to go all the way to one, but we are going to start on seven. So, I'm just going to clip that in. So is that suction down to the... Ah, uh, it's clipped. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Good. So when you're working with the dough, try not to put your fingers into it. Try and hold it kind of like over the flat edge. Because okay. as the dough gets thinner, you'll poke your fingers right, right through it. And like if you're making spaghetti or linguine, it's not that big a deal. But for ravioli, you don't want any holes in the pasta. So now... Ooh. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so what we can do here is we can just keep going, um, but we have these kind of flaps on the end. And what's going to happen is when we go to make our raviolis, we're going to have to cut those off and just kind of get rid of them. It's going to be a waste. So what we're going to do instead is fold our dough over into the shape we want. Okay? We're going to sprinkle the dough a little bit less, and we're going to sprinkle a little bit more flour on it. I'm going to roll that out gently so we don't make it too wide. Now we're going to go back. Now when you do this, there is the risk that it's going to get a little bit too wide. But then what we're going to do is fold it over and then roll it out a little bit but it is worth the effort. Ruby wants to know, are you going to describe what someone without a pasta maker has has to do? Yeah, so if you don't have a pasta maker, you just do this, just by hand. Um, but like I said, make sure you make the dough a day in advance if you're gonna do it that way. And then we'll go back. So, thank you. So you're still working the dough by doing this? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So now we kind of have the desired shape. So we're going to drop down to six. And then same thing. Back. Now five. If your dough is really stretchy, if it keeps springing back on you, you may need to go through each number twice, but this dough actually isn't that bad, so I'm only going to go through once. Four? Or f yeah, I think we skipped it. And you can, you can see, you can kind of start to see my fingers right. like it's getting nice and thin. And this is when it's really important that you don't put your fingers into it. So we only rolled this out to three, but I can already see my fingers through the dough, so I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to roll it out anymore. So what we're going to do now, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually make the ravioli. So if you pass me that thing right there. So one thing you can do is buy a little machine like this, where you just lay a sheet of pasta over this, you push it down. Like that, you fill it with your filling, you lay another sheet over the top, and then you roll it with your rolling pin. Okay. And it fills it and cuts it. And I think this was 20 bucks. But I'm positive that most of you don't have this, so we're not going to use this today. So you can put that back over there. The other thing you can do is you can take a ring cutter, so like a cookie cutter, like something round, 
and you can make like a put a dollop of filling in the middle, put another piece of dough, flatten it, and then cut it, and you get a nice round ravioli. What we're going to do is more of a rustic style, and is by far the easiest way to do this. So the first thing we need to do is actually break an egg. So that's where egg number five. Is. Yep. So we can break it right into there. sheet of dough and we're going to just kind of rub egg wash over the whole thing and then we're going to put balls of filling like that we'll fold it over press it and then we'll cut it cool so just rub it in by hand yeah so you don't want too much egg on here you want just enough to kind of moisten the dough evenly a little bit too Okay, so we have our dough all egg washed, and now we're just going to take nice little balls of filling. Not too big, you don't want to you know, overpower, so if you want to start that end, I'll start this end. You want to leave about uh, an inch between them, and an inch from the, from the edge as well. So this is by far the quickest and easiest way to make raviolis. I don't know, that little do the daddy Okay, this is the <laughs> second easiest and quickest way to make raviolis. <laughs> I think that's good actually. Make it cold there. Okay, now what we're going to do... Jody wants to know how much filling. One tablespoon? Uh, yeah, it's about a tablespoon. Now we're just going to fold these over and flatten them a little if you have to. Jody, not Jody. But we're not going to seal it yet. We're just going to fold it over. And now we're going to go back and push in between them. And if you need to flatten them a little bit, it's okay. And now we're going to just go as close as you can to the filling. So we want to squeeze as much air out of there as we can. So if we have too much air in there, as the, as the ravioli cook, the, the air is going to expand and it's going to make them explode. And that's not, when you put all this work into the raviolis, you do not want them to explode. So now, we're going to cut them. This one's got a lot of air in it. I'll take a look at that one. Watch your fingers. Okay. Significantly big. That's okay. Yeah, okay. So now we're just going to take a pan, clean towel on it. Clean towel. Put a little bit of flour on it. We'll take our raviolis and we can trim them down if we need, and we're just going to Squeeze a little bit, of, as much of the air out as we can. Hi, Mo. Is 
that Mo? Hey Mo, how are you? I haven't seen you in forever. This one's a little sticky on the bottom. So there we go. So very, very simple. Avioli. And I'll just trim them down. Yeah, that one's a little bit on the gooey side. So you got to be careful not to get any egg on the bottom, because right. that'll okay. that'll get nice and sticky. These are a little sticky. So then that's all you do. You go through. You pinch all the air out. You make them nice and pretty. And we are losing a little bit of dough, so you just in trim, but not nearly as much as you do with other methods of ravioli making. These are generous portions. Yeah, so like for ravioli this size, I would generally only give like five. Yeah. And you don't need to eat a lot of them. The, the little machine makes smaller ones, but I always prefer bigger raviolis. Now, if you were a person that doesn't like pork, for instance, what do you recommend other than... I mean, you can put anything here. You can uh, roast a butternut squash, you can put spinach mixed with the ricotta. Um, oh, I mean, good. there's like anything you could imagine you could put in here. This one's got some hair. It just does and not want to come out. No. Is that a hole? No, it's just a, a, pepper. a little piece of pepper. pepper. So again, all we're really doing is squeezing the air out of these and just kind of warming them up a bit. Hey, Carol. How's he doing there? Is he doing good? He's doing a really good job, yeah. Hey. That's what I want to hear. I know who to call if I need some help with, the, <laughs> with an event. I'd help you anytime, <laughs> absolutely. I can take orders really well. I'm not great at giving them, I just kind of push people out of the way and do it myself. <laughs> nine raviolis there which in nine like nice size ravioli yeah so set this aside and then you're gonna do that okay but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually give the counter a little flouring before just in case there's any egg compost Yes, I do, Carol. It's awesome. And I get to eat it when they're done. Carol says, hi, Donna. Don't you love seeing two men in the kitchen? You go, Steve. <laughs> hi, Carol. So I'm going to roll it out. Kind of has the consistency of Danish pastry. You find that bad? Uh, I've never worked with Danish pastry. Never. Uh, I've only worked in Canada. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, yeah, a little bit, like a butter pastry. Yeah, yeah, that's all it is. I think I'm going to have to make Ben a, a, a rolling pin. Please. Although, I, I will say I don't use them very much since I don't eat wheat anymore. Yeah. So 
So you, if you look, well, if you look at it, it's flat here, yeah. and it's kind of flat here, but in the center, you're a little high. So okay. just focus. Yeah, just focus in the center there. It's these new glasses. I can't get a good perspective on anything, but they're trendy. They look very good. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So before you before you jump into that, I want you to taste this sauce. So all this is is the onions, salt, pepper, and the tomatoes. Oh. But you see that sweetness? Oh, oh yeah. That's just from the onions. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. So we don't need to add any sugar to balance that mm -hmm. acidity from the tomatoes. It's mm -hmm. just because we caramelized those onions. Okay. Are we ready to run this now? Or? We're ready to run it. Okay. So I'm going to change this setting back to yes. 7. So this is incredibly important, and I'm glad you caught that. Because it doesn't really matter too much with the hand ones, because you're not going to get it through. But if you're using like an electric pasta roller, like on a KitchenAid, and you forget to change the setting, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks so much. Okay, so I'm going to give this a try. Yep. So when you do this, um, you want to make sure you don't have too much flour on your pasta because it won't get stuck, it won't get right. caught by the rollers. And you want a little bit of tension on it. Okay. Yeah. And so one sec. Yeah. So yeah, what you did was perfect. So you saw it was kind of coming this way, and then you and that's it. You want to use the pasta to kind of steer it okay. in the direction you want it to go. So I used to work at a mono, I've probably told stories about this before, I used to work at a mono uh, in Halifax, which is an Italian restaurant, and I would go in the morning and the first, pretty much the first two things I had to do were make gnocchi and make pasta. So I would spend three to four hours a day making gnocchi and pasta. And so gnocchi I, is potato pasta? Yeah. Yeah, we made that a, little, a week before last, I think. That's great. Yeah. So it's on the freezer, actually. Okay. Okay. Let me get this to go in the right spot. Here we go. So what you'll notice is it's actually easier to start rolling and then try and get the past in. Okay. Because then it'll catch it. And at this point, you can just let it drop and then pick it up from, uh, okay. from the other side there. All right. Okay, I'm now on setting four. Here we go. Oh, those peppers look like heaven. The onions got a little overcooked, and that's okay. I don't think you can overcook onions, can you? <laughs> I, think, I think these ones on the edges, yeah, definitely. <laughs> They'll make great gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is actually pull the peppers out and put them in this bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. And it's going to steam them and then the peels will come right off and then you don't get that stuck in your teeth. Hi, Lynn. All the way from Michigan? I forget, I'm sorry. If she is in Michigan, she's the second person watching tonight from Michigan. I, I know this. I know where she's from. I'm just drawing a blank at the moment. So you can see the color on these peppers. They're nice and roasted. So we're just going to wrap these in plastic wrap. She's from Norwood. Where's that? Close to, I forget. Close to Michigan? <laughs> Is it close to Michigan? I forget. That's a three. Yeah, that's a little close. As far as we're going to go. Okay, so we've got this done down to a three. Going to pull this all out here and take a look at that's it. That's beautiful. Whoa. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Not saying anything, but you know. <laughs> Next thing we got to put on is some egg. 
You're a natural. A natural, a natural egg. Uh, Lynn is in Ohio, she says. Oh, sorry, Lynn. Wow. That's awesome. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to get this other one going. This is very close to making cinnamon buns. Kinda, yeah. It is actually because you're doing the layers. Yeah. So actually, you know what? I'm going to save this one and I'm going to roll this one out by hand even though it's going to be a very big pain in the ass. But I'm going to do it so you guys can see how to do it. So I'll save this one for a minute. Get rid of this. So we've perfectly executed putting on the egg wash. <laughs> it's almost like you're starting to get comfortable with going again. you guys are playing paying attention because you're gonna need to redo this so we have a few more people watching now we have a really super exciting announcement and Don is gonna pop here in here in a second and tell you about a really super exciting opportunity for everybody that's watching tonight go ahead Don. Right now sure all right well might as well We are giving away this cutting board to somebody in the audience who is watching the show, who makes this meal. It doesn't have to be pork, it can be another filling, but still this meal. Takes a picture of their meal and posts it on Chef Ben's Facebook page, and it has to be done by Monday. And you have to tag Ashworks in it. You have to tag Ashworks in it. And Ben is going to choose a winner. Um, on Monday in his next next week's show and it doesn't matter where you're from we will ship it to you if you're not from here like we'd like so to say if you're from away okay. yeah. anyways it's a maple end grain cutting board made by my family and I so good luck everybody and you also get care instructions and a bottle of mineral oil to take care of the board isn't yes it? And if they don't win and they want to buy one of these boards for Christmas or whatever, how can they do that? Great question. You Those are the only kind I ask. Them. <laughs> you can buy this online. You can buy it at the Halifax Seaport Farmers paper. Market. And we are there uh, Tuesday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So not just on Saturday. And uh, you could also reach out to, out to us on Facebook and uh, just start up a message on our Ashworks page and ask us about it, and uh, we will respond as quickly as possible. And we do ship. We actually ship all over the world. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You do a really good job on this. Mike says, no, my wife can't wait for ravioli. <laughs> Are you making ravioli, Mike? So Mike is in Detroit as well. Oh, yeah, not as Detroit. well, but since in the, the other person wasn't in Detroit. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. She says beautiful board. Hi, Pam. Hi, Chantel. So Pam is my mother-in-law. Ah. Boy, it's tough getting the air out of these. It is. It is. It's almost ignorant. <laughs> Ben's cleaning up my mess. Mike's, Mike says ravioli is going to be Sunday dinner. Nice. Ooh.
You guys are lucky. These are going to be delicious. <laughs> but I can't eat them. So how, how old were you when you found out you couldn't um, eat, eat gluten? Uh, this was last summer. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? So you were struggling with it before that? Yeah, and I didn't know what it was. And then I, oh. we, uh, the place I was working at the time, we had a, like, a staff weight loss competition. Yeah. So I stopped eating bread. Yeah. And I always had like stomach problems, and I always been like kind of lethargic and stuff. And I stopped eating bread, and it went away overnight. Oh no way! Yeah. yeah. Wow. But it's interesting you say that. My, um, I have some members of my family that had some very similar issues, and uh, they're completely gluten free, and it's made a huge impact on their health. It's made a huge impact on mine for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think. So actually, this is good. So this one has a little hole in it. Um, now we could just throw it away, or we do a little patch job. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of piece of dough. It has an egg on it already. And we're just going to patch it up. And you can notice it a little bit, but once it's cooked, you won't notice it at all. Hi, Jessica. So the gluten thing is new. The shellfish thing I found out when I was seven. Oh, okay. the hard way. Oh. Yeah. We used to. It was weird. We used to eat shellfish all the time. Like every Friday, we'd have like shrimp or lobster or something. And then one one week, I just went into anaphylactic shock. And was told no more. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially. Uh, Being a chef. In this city, right? Yes. Yeah. But are you able to cook with seafood? Yeah, I can. I can handle it. Um, and it's just shrimp, lobster, and crab. Like everything else is oh, fine. Okay. Um, Three bats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I have to be very, very careful because if I like get it on my hands and touch my eyes or my mouth right. or like anything, I could have a reaction. So we have a lot of ravioli here. I don't actually know if we need to make more. Well, I am going to roll that out, but I don't think we need to make any more raviolis. Only enough ravioli for everybody. There's, a, yeah, there's quite a few there. Well, we have, what, 18? There's only two people eating. <laughs> <laughs> Can your wife have some? Yeah, my wife will be very happy to have them. Actually, that's, um, I had some, like, uh, some pasta with weed in it left over from an event I did. And she ate it the other day, and she's just been eating gluten-free pasta with me. And she couldn't believe how like how gross she felt afterwards. Oh, really? Because it, the, with the gluten-free pasta, it's like all rice and corn, and you don't get that like really heavy oh, right. feeling afterwards. She couldn't yeah. believe the difference. I very rarely eat anything like bread. Yeah. I love bread. I worked in a bakery for years, and I love it, but I just don't eat it. It gives me heartburn. If, if I could, I would kick you guys out right now and sit down with an entire baguette and just oh, really? go to town. Like just a, like a pound of butter and a fresh baguette. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pam Cotton wants us to send some out to the Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you're here, I'll make you some, Pam. I promise. Judy wants to know if that's a damp towel you're putting past uh, it. No. It's very important that you use a dry towel. Any moisture is going to soften the dough and it's going to get really sticky and fall apart. So I actually put flour on the cloth to dry it out even more. No moisture at all. Good question, Judy. So I'm just rolling this out just to demonstrate that it can be done. It's not the most pleasant thing to do, but you know, if you don't have a pasta roller, you can do this. Something boiling over there. That's just the water for the ravioli. Hi, Mom and Dad. So, it's a little bit thicker, but it's still fine for the ravioli. And if you really want to, you can kind of stretch it a little bit. That looks dangerous to me. Yeah, it is a little bit dangerous. But there you go. So that was rolled out by hand. And again, if you let it sit overnight before you roll it, it'll be a lot easier to roll. Okay. So, the only thing left to do... The gluten in that is really well developed. It is, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, the only thing left to do is put it all together. 
So I'm just going to wash this pan really quickly. So because this is fresh pasta and the meat is already cooked, they're going to take no time at all. It'll take about three minutes to cook. Um, so we want to have everything ready to go. So what we're going to do is set this over here. I think I need a bigger kitchen. Especially with two extra people yeah. in it. Black and crunchy. I'd say an onion, probably. So, see what I'm going to need you to do is peel these peppers. I didn't watch that YouTube video with how to peel peppers. I'll show you. Okay. Because this is actually a really cool trick. So, we took them out of the oven, and I mean, you, if you barbecue, whatever you do, take them out. Put them in a bowl, cover them in plastic wrap, and then the peel pretty much just comes right Look off. Look at that. Okay, now I know a lot of people are saying, well, why bother? It's because this, especially once it's cooked, the peel gets really, really tough, and it's just not fun to eat. Uh, okay. Now, if you're having trouble getting the peel off, you can just use a knife and just scrape it. Mm. Just the peel. Just scrape it right off. Okay. But be careful because they are still pretty hot. Okay. okay. So. At boiling water, I'm going to drop eight raviolis in it. So with the ravioli, you can make a lot of them and freeze them. But if you are going to freeze them, you have to blanch them first. So drop them in boiling water for about a minute. Take them out, put them in ice water just until they cool. And then you can dry them, wrap them, and freeze them. If you freeze them like this, they're just going to kind of fall apart. They're going to be really, really brittle. So blanch them, but you can freeze them. It's okay. This is very hot, so be careful when you do it that you don't burn your fingers. Do you want me to do that? No, no. Okay, so I just dropped the raviolis. I'm going to put a little bit of sauce. Uh, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to turn the pan on, and I'm going to cook a little bit of spinach down, and then I'll add the sauce to it. And you can tell the raviolis are done. It's really just about texture. So give, take one out of the water, give it a little poke um, on, on like where the filling is. The filling's soft, it's probably hot. Uh, and give the pasta a little squeeze on the edge. It should be firm, but not like, not really tough. Some of these are not cooperating. That's what, I mean, if you can't get all the peels off, it's not the only world. It's just you guys eating this. You're not going to have any of the sauce? I can't because of the, the flour everywhere. I can't oh, get any of it. Wow. So anybody in Halifax, next weekend we're going to be at the Nova Scotia uh, Craft um, Show. If you want to drop in and see us, uh, that's at the Canard Center, and it's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we're super excited. I might not be there a whole lot, because uh, I'll be mostly in the shop, but Donna will definitely be there. She may have a helper or two. And then you can see some really cool stuff. And you guys, I don't know if people know this, but you guys do things other than cutting boards. We do. We do countertop and... Uh, we make a lot of boxes, which I don't like to admit right now. Coasters. Coasters. Christmas tree ornaments. Knife holders. Old yeah. fashioned Christmas tree ornaments, the wooden ones. Knife holders, magnetic knife holders, patterns. The magnetic knife holders are really popular. I don't know if you noticed the one that Ben, Chef Ben has there. 
but he actually has a, a cleaver on there and it holds the cleaver no problem at all. It's true. We tested it. <laughs> we know that we tell everybody the truth, but until we see it in person, it's like, we know it's the truth, but it sure would be nice to see it in action. <laughs> of course, we have lots in our own kitchen. What's it, like of all the stuff you make? Because you guys make these like beautiful lazy susans. You make these gorgeous boards. Now you have the maple lime. You do the the knife holders. Like out of everything, what's your favorite thing? Like because I'm assuming your house is just full charcuterie of charcuterie platters. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The charcuterie, like the one you have the there. Back right there. It's they, they're so much fun. They're so beautiful and. We have about four or five, maybe six different designs that we yeah. do in the charcuterie platters. And we've been making them for about six years. Yeah. And they still, I get excited when I see them. Nice. And they're very unique. The designs. They I are. don't know if anybody else that does the type of woodworking we're doing on those. There may, I'm not saying that there aren't others, but I don't know anybody. A number of years ago, Donna was invited to uh, do a little presentation with Prince Charles. He was in town. And she showed him one of our charcuterie platters. And he was absolutely gaga over it. He didn't get it. We got to keep it. But um, Donna held on to it for a long time. She had a shrine built around it. She I did worshiped, not. She, she worshipped this, this one that <laughs> Prince Charles had touched. I didn't realize that she had taken it down and put, put it away. And I cut it up and made it into knife holders. He did. That's a true story. Oh, I no. really cried. I did. I did, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. We also do some stuff that's relatively inexpensive. We do things like sandwich boards yeah. that are uh, quite affordable. And a couple of years ago, my mother-in-law told me that's exactly what she wanted for Christmas, was some sandwich boards. And realistically, she can have pretty much whatever she wants. You also do these really cool little garlic smash boards. Yeah. What's nice about the garlic smash boards is you use it specifically for garlic or onions or something else we've discovered with those is that they're great if you have a bar and you want to use it for your lemons or limes um, and just leave it at your bar. Or you can do your little whatever umbrella type stuff. Now we're, we're in the process of develop, developing a brand new product for us. It's a pastry board and it's fairly significant in size and we're, we have an order for some. They're going to Toronto and we're super stoked about them. And so. tell them about our chopping blocks. And we also <laughs> have some maple chopping blocks. You can find them in Halifax. The chopping blocks are two and a half inches thick. They're maple. They're heavy duty. They're end grain as well. They're end grain. They're stunning. They're very similar to the maple board that we're giving away. Except way bigger. It, yeah, it's a, it's, a sig it's a cutting board on steroids. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, can they, find it? they could find them at a place called Grindhouse Kemp Road. on Kemp Road, which is a, a place that the young fellow makes, makes uh, very nice uh, knives. And... Uh, you can find them there. So that's new for us and very exciting. We've had a lot of really exciting things happen in the last little while. Yeah. Well, you and I can say this is probably one of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, this <laughs> is very fun. exciting for us. You guys kind of said the last like year or two is really like things have kind of really started to explode. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Since we opened up a permanent store at the Halifax Seaport Farmers Market, we made a difference. So I'm going to give these to you and I'm going to finish those off. Okay. So I'm going to get a hold of them. So, uh, okay. I'm actually just going to show this one to the camera. Oh my so Lord. all I did was I wilted some spinach, so just hot pan, touch of olive oil, spinach in, uh, ravioli cooked, a little bit of the sauce that we made, and some fresh parm and a touch of pepper over the top. What are we doing with the peppers? So I'm going to 
chop those up real quick, and then I'm going to toss them with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Okay. And then you just, they're just kind of snacks. Ah. So those are going to be very, very, very hot. Yes. Hey Chris, so this is the board again, so if you want to win it, you have to recreate the meal that I just made. Tomorrow I'll post the recipes for it, uh, and then post a picture on my Facebook, tag Ashworks in it, and then next Monday I'm going to choose a winner out of those who post it. And this is what you win. Beautiful, beautiful board. Mm. So for those who didn't see this before, if you do win this, We'll ship it to you no matter where you are. This is made out of, uh, out of maple that looks like walnut and maple and cherry, but it's all maple. And it's as smooth as silk. <laughs> well, I guess we should actually tell them what your Facebook is on. Right, so our Facebook page, <laughs> our Facebook page, if you look up Ashworks, it's um, spelled A-S-H-W-U-R-K-S. That's our Facebook page, and our website is ashworks.ca, A-S-H-W-U-R-K-S dot C-A. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ben, this is too good. good. So good. Amazing. So then, this mm. was meant to be an appetizer, but we kind of mixed up our timing. <laughs> So we just have the peppers and onions in here. And all I'm going to do is a little bit of balsamic. Touch more olive oil. A bit of salt. And a bit of pepper. And I'm done. I'm gonna get you to just give this a little try. Mm -hmm. You want to put it on the tape? Yeah. It's right down my alley. This, um, mm. this, and like you roast some zucchini with it, some eggplant, or whatever, and then let it sit in the balsamic, and then toss it with goat cheese and arugula. It's one of my favorite salads. So good. Yeah, it's delicious. So Sweet. that. Just the roasted peppers and onions, a little bit of balsamic, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. Steve, mm -hmm. do you want to try that? Sue says she'd love a pastry board, dear Santa. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for coming. Do you have anything else you want to say to the people before we go? This has been Are you fun. okay? It's hot. <laughs> Let's get a bite. Guys. Thank you so much again, and thank you to all of you. Uh, I am Chef Ben. This is Dinner with Ben, brought to you by Ashworks Cutting Boards, uh, and of course, Team North Carbonated Iced Tea. Uh, next week, uh, I do not, I'll be right back. I do know what we're making next week. Hold on. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. It was wonderful. It was fun. Delicious. And we're super excited to see who wins this board. <laughs> okay, I got it. Next week, We'll be making seafood chowder. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, excellent. Uh, so tune in next week. We'll do the seafood chowder, and I will draw the name for that board. Um, and if you're watching this uh, at some point throughout this week, whether it's here on Facebook or on YouTube, you can enter as well. You just have to take the picture of the food that you make and post it to my Facebook and tag Ashworks in it. Yep. Um, Thank you very much, everybody. I hope that you all have a fantastic night and a fantastic week. Thank you again to Don and Steve for coming. I'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Bye, everybody.